welcome everybody. This is Coach's Corner. So you have Malik and myself, Ashley, with you today. Um, we are going to take you through a top, oh, and Lila. Thank you for showing us those. <laughs> we are going to take you through one topic today. It is about resistance. And of course, we always start off with the quote of the day. So we're going to start you guys off with that. Our quote today is actually from a pretty well-known coach. Um, if you've ever watched college basketball, it's John Wooden. He coached UCLA for many, many years. Legend. and Legend. Legend, for real. Very looked up to man um, and coach, but um, just really great human. And if you look, or if you heard any like interviews speaking with like, um, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, anyone that was like coached by um, John Wooden, that he was like a father to these people, um, to these kids that he was coaching, to these men. And he really made them into like really amazing men. He was just an overall like great human. Um, we were UCLA fans growing up. So um, we watched him a lot and my dad loved him. And my dad always had quotes from him. So this is one of his quotes and I really love this one. So it's it says, things work out best for those who make the best of how things work out. What do you think, Malik? I never knew you were a UCLA fan. Yep, always. <laughs> I didn't know that. A uh, big Cal guy. For me, especially at the end when it says how you can, uh, you know, make best of, you know, what's what happened. Of how things work out. Yeah. Um, it reminds me kind of like, Take it how it is and then do your best with what you got. So I love that. I think it's a good mindset quote. What What did you get from it? I just feel like it's just like packed. Like that quote is just like so packed with good stuff. Um, So if you think about what he's saying and if you, like even just thinking about him as like a coach and teaching these like these young people how to be men, um, going through like losses with, mm -hmm. you know, coaching as far as like games and stuff if you make the best of how things work out so like let's just say you lose a game <clears throat> with with that loss can come a lot of growth mm -hmm. um with that loss you can you can go back and look at the tape right you can go back and look at what went wrong you can go back and see maybe what um what you could do better so making the the best making the best of how things worked out, making the best of that loss is figuring out what happened and how you can grow from it and what you can do better. And I feel like that can be applied to like so much in life. Yeah. Mr. Potato head, by the way, like, if you're wondering, I was, I was wondering what that was. I was like, what toy could that be? No, but is, I, Mr. Potato head is uh going to work, work out the best of what he's got right now. Oh uh, no, but it's good. Cause like also that quote, brings into like, how can you improve in no matter what situation? Like if yes. something happens, if something bad happens, because if you go to in the other direction, right? Oh, I lost a game or I lost, you know, this, I, you know, went for this job and I lost the job, whatever it is in life. Um, you can get down on yourself and you can identify with it. You could say, this is who I am. Or like you said, get better from it, learn from it and see what you could do differently. Yeah. So, yeah. Now you're a coach. So this yeah. could be like, this is like you. Oh, I might have a what chance. I might have a chance to go back play. I was just kidding. But <laughs> what yes, can you teach the kids? But yeah, a hundred percent. You're, you're isn't, isn't it so cool? Because I feel like that is such a huge mindset shift because you could literally take that loss and it could it could derail you to a certain mm -hmm. extent, right? Or you can take that and just say, like, let's just say also like in life, something happened. Right. You could take that and say, well, it wasn't for me. I didn't get that job. Well, it wasn't for me, right? It wasn't for mm -hmm. me because there's something I could learn from not getting that job out. Right, there's right. something, there's something that I could take from it, from not getting that job or there's some, or, you know, it wasn't the right fit, whatever it was, it just wasn't for you. And there's something on the other side that's going to come from it right there's something either better that you're going to get as far as like a job yeah. or there's going to be another another win in the in the football season that's going to be even bigger and better get you to like yeah. to the next step right to going Ooh. towards yep. championships and all that stuff like i feel it, it's just something that could create a lot of winners it could create a lot of people who don't take losses who don't take failure who don't let that over 
power and overcome them, right? Yeah. No, 100%. And I like how you said uh, there's something better on the other side, you know, when you can figure that out, because we were talking a little, a little bit before this uh, about resistance, yeah. and I think it kind of like segues perfectly into, so we're talking about like, do you ever feel, I remember like right, like, right, right before we started recording this, do you ever feel like when you're trying to do something, it's like hard to do that thing? Um, you know, we we're talking about recording this, but it could be anything like dishes or folding your laundry. I know a lot of people have a hard time folding their laundry, you know, just like things like that, cleaning up like little things around your house, you know, messaging that person you've, you've needed to email or message for a long time. So talking about that resistance now, and I remember you saying that when you pass that resistance, it's teaching us something that resistance is teaching us something. I think you have to be aware of it first. I think if you're not aware of it, you just think you're a victim and like the world's coming at you, but in reality, it's it's a test. Say, oh, okay, you didn't maybe not get what you want now. Let's reflect and see what we can change to get whatever we're trying to get to. Um, yeah. We're going to talk about resistance a little bit because I think you had a, you had a couple good points when we were talking before about like pushing past. Yeah. Um, also, like what you just said, I feel like a lot of people, especially now, are instant gratification and things. I almost like think things just come easy. <laughs> or should come easy to them. Right. But right. like what people don't realize and what like probably our parents and like the generation before us all went through was like the hardship of mm -hmm. like going through the hard to get to where you are now. Right. Like you're, you're not just given things in life. And a lot of people, especially where we live, it could be that they're just given things. So they're not used to that resistance, but the resistance is good. I was about you to say, want you be aware. They're not even aware of it sometimes. Yeah. Like that resistance to know, to be aware that it's good for you, to be aware that that, that resistance is something we need. We like through resistance, you grow through, you know, having resistance in your life is how you get better and stronger. Mm. And I mean, talk about resistance training, right? We're both trainers. You, well, I was thinking about this whole time. <laughs> you talk about re uh, working out. It's hard and it yep. sucks. And like, like I'm super Hurts. sore now. I I feel like I can barely lift my arms up and I have yep. a baby to carry. Like it's hard. Little, it's little, little tangent, good catch. Uh, little tangent. <laughs> you multitask incredibly well. I just want to let everyone, I don't know how the heck you're doing everything that you're doing right now. I'm like here trying to focus and I'm like, have my cup of coffee. I'm freaking out. You know, you're over there. It's like two kids. It's easy peasy. I'm like, but yeah. Um, this is my resistance. Strong resistance. I don't know how you're there. So you're, you're going to get stronger no matter what. So that's good. Cool. Yeah, <laughs> right, I'm growing. Yeah. But resistance training, I was thinking that same thing, like going into the gym, if you're trying to get big, you know, especially for the guys that I coach and they're all trying to you know, get strong or get stronger, get bigger. A lot of the smaller guys trying to get bigger. Um, you have to go through a lot of pain and resistance in order to get that achievement. So whether that's in life, physically, you can see it, right? Am I getting bigger? Am I getting stronger? But emotionally, you can't see it. You can feel it though. So I feel like a lot of people maybe need to get, as myself included, more more aware about the feelings and feel the resistance and feel these different things because we're so used to training and seeing everything. You know, there's mirrors, there's muscles, there's body fat percentage. Then when you take it to the emotional side or the, the mental side, you can't see it. So how do you feel that we, we can, one, how do you feel, Ashley, that one, we can be aware of it or like point it out? And then how do we, you know, become aware of it? And then how do we know what the next steps are? Yeah, I think that's a really, uh, that's a super good question. With, so like with resistance training or with working out, you can see it, right? Yeah. Think about how, how we have to pair um, working out with also eating well. Sometimes when you're like eating well and you change your diet, um, you don't right away see the benefits. You don't right away see that you're losing the weight, but you can feel that you're less bloated. You feel a little lighter. You feel like your joints hurt less. You feel like a little bit um, less like clouded. You feel your pants fitting you differently, but you don't see the weight that came off. Right. Have you had people say that they're like, you know what? Oh yeah. My, my shirt fits differently or my, my pants fit the better. Scale. Yeah. Yes. Forget Same the thing. scale, right? Like yeah. you, I, I've told many people like that, like, forget the scale. Don't even think about the scale because how do your pants, how do your clothes fit? Right. 
So maybe they don't see the number change and like, that's like a whole different story because of muscle and fat. Right. But maybe they don't see the number change, but then their clothes feel different. And you're like, okay, well you can feel the difference, right? Like you can feel it, but you might not be able to see it. So I think that with, with resistance. So like this morning, if you were feeling that resistance and you were like, you know what, today, I think I need a break from the podcast. I don't think I want to record today. I always want to record, but you know how it goes making stuff so let's just say that was the resistance and you recognized it so you were like oh man I'm like I don't really want to record today that happens so much with working out dude I don't want to go work out like I am I'm tired it's raining outside it's cold yeah. like it, it honestly it sucks to go work out when it's like this cold during the summer you're like yeah I'm gonna be in a bikini yeah. like I, I'm gonna go I'm gonna go work out I'm gonna have my shirt off going to the beach but like in the winter you don't oh. want to. No, this is bulking season, right? Oh, so I, I think that realizing that it hits you. So like, there's a really good rule where you can like either count to five or go like three, two, one, go. You realize that today I need to go work out, but today I also don't feel like working out. All right. Three, two, one, let that, let that go. I'm going to just do it. Right. I feel like that's a really good start because if you just eliminate the thought, if you just like three, two, one, go, I just have to go work out, get changed. Let's yeah. do it. And don't just sit in it. Don't just sit in like, oh, I don't want to work out because of this, 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 and that, and make all the excuses. Eventually that repetitive, that consistent, that consistency where you like kick, kick the thought, kick the, um, resistance, kick the negativity. It just starts becoming this pattern of like, you are no longer going to give into that and you're just going to keep going and keep pushing through. And then that negative thought turns into a positive one because you were like, all right, I'm done. I'm going to go do it. I'm going to go do the thing I don't want to do. Don't give it time. Yeah. You like can't let that. it fester. I like that. Let it what? You can't let it fester, right? Like you can't let it just, you can't just fester in it and sit in it this and be like, oh my God. Of fester. This is what I do on the daily, dude. I, I look up words like this. To wound of a wound or sore become septic or separate uh, of a negative feeling or problem. I'm assuming this is what we mean. Become worse or more intense, especially through long term neglect or indifference. So basically, like uh, you, you just make it worse because you're thinking about it. You just make it worse because you're thinking about it. You're sitting in it. Yeah. You can't sit in it. You have to three, two, can't one, let it go. Can't be festering here. Okay, no we learned. Fester. We should we make a shirt a today. We should make a shirt. This is no fester. No festering. <laughs> That'll be a. That's the first coach's corner merch. No <laughs> festering. Write that down. Yeah. Uh, no okay. Festering. So that's our, that's, I feel like that's a good first step. No, I like that. Um, kick, kick there the was a, mommy, have, be right there. okay. Um, there's a second step I, I thought of and I wrote down because I was, let's see, I was taking a cycling certification and her, her name is Doris Hughes, I believe. And she was like our instructor mm -hmm. person. Mm -hmm. So this is what, so essentially, if you guys have ever taken a cycle class, you're sitting with the instructor and you're on a bike that's going nowhere, right? You're, you're on a bike, you're on a bike, Stay and put. Sitting there. <laughs> you are going nowhere. You're staying in one place and you're just pedaling your feet. Oh. So what she was saying was like, you guys as an instructor, and think about this as a coach too, you guys, as the coach, as the instructor, if you had a bad day, no one cares. You are coming in. And they're there because they want you. They want that energy. They want that inspiration. They want you to take them through a class. They want them to you to take them through a workout, right? And if you had a bad day, you got to throw that out the window. Like you have to show up. Like we have to show up for our people, right? Yeah. Um, show up for this podcast, show up for people listening, show up for our, um, and our classes and show up for your team. So what she said, what she said was, I really love this. I feel like it's pretty, it's really profound. If you're going through some adversity, if you're going through some resistance, write down 10 reasons why that resistance adverse or that adversity is working for you. 10 reasons and 10 reasons can be really hard actually. And that's why she said it 10 reasons, because you have to really work and think and fight through that adversity to write down 10 reasons of why it's working for you. So 
Maybe you didn't get a job. You have to write down 10 reasons why not getting that job is working for you, why it's benefiting you. One, it could be, you know, there's something better. There's something out there that's better. It wasn't the right fit. It was, um, you know, not my type of people. It was um, not going to give me enough growth. You know, that's already like five. Long commute. Exactly. It could be. It could be, there's so many, there's so many different things, but, but, but in the moment, not getting that job might feel like really hard. So having to sit and think of those 10 things is going to get you out of it, right? It's going to get you out of that negative aspect or out of that negative, um, feeling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you're going to move forward because now you're like, all right, well, it was a long commute and it wouldn't have worked for me. It was, it wasn't my type of people that I wanted to be around. It was whatever it was It's so hard in that moment. Yeah, it is. And so yeah. like, just literally saying three, two, one, go write down 10 reasons why this isn't work for, working for me. You do the 10 reasons and then you're out of it. It's yeah. done. Like, it's I think that's, that was so cool. Like that was something that really stuck with me. And those being the first two, like immediately trying to get out of that feeling, writing down why that adversity is working for you. And then after that, like I was saying, not letting it fester that third one, like stop sitting in it, go do something, go take a walk, go work out, go, um, or making that shirt. Yeah. <laughs> this be a hoodie, no festering or something like that. Like it's like festering and then it's gonna have the big, like zero with the cross out of it. Like, Is it such an uncool word though? <laughs> I don't even know what the word was until right now. Dude. <laughs> I know. Such a, it's well, such a weird word. I like, uh, so I wrote down some notes when you were talking about like your, your steps and kick the thought. Um, I like that because I heard on another podcast, like, and this is going into a whole nother podcast. I'm just going to say, cause I want to say it, but I don't want to go to a whole nother tangent, but like it goes from like um, a thought, you know, like a thought, thought creates everything, whether it's good or bad, you know, you're feeling good, you're feeling not good. And it goes from the thought, which is like above our brain and it like plants into our brain. And then as we keep, like you said, festering in it, we keep soiling it or watering, festering, watering. Yes. It is. And it becomes reality. So it's like the thought is a seed that goes into the brain. The brain ends up like using our body to then make that reality. So that's why, like, when you say kick the thought, it's like, if you, it's kind of like not out of sight, out of mind, it's not here, but out of, out of mind, out of mind. Right. But it's, it's hard to kick a thought. Cause it's like in there. And especially when you think, don't think of an elephant, you know, what are you thinking about right now? You know, an elephant. So you got to like work on that, but as much as you can, I think distracting yourself in a workout is great you know, doing, get, just getting out of it. Um, getting outside and breathing some fresh air. Yeah. That's just huge. Doing, it's uh, changing your environment. So it'll change yes. what you're thinking about. And yep. then you said, think of, um, think of others before that I put, uh, think of a feeling. So like, you know, when they say, Oh, I regret that workout and no one ever. So yeah. it's like me having the resistance of the show all, oh, or all these feelings of like, the resistance, oh, folding laundry is going to take a long time. I'm tired. Why don't we f- start thinking of the feeling we're going to feel after we do that thing? Oh, I'm going to do this podcast. I'm going to feel great. I got some content done. We're, we're able to share some, uh, maybe some laughs with some other people. Um, <laughs> it's, like the podcast after it is always great. The yeah. the workout after it is always great. After you're done folding the laundry, you feel amazing. So maybe start thinking of like um, the feeling of how we're going to feel after we do that rather than like how we're feeling right in this moment. And then the last one you said, I really liked how you said, think of others. So I was listening to a pod yesterday and it was talking about the more we think about, or if you just like talk to somebody and then you grab their words and you analyze them, the more they talk about themselves, they're either uh, depressed or psychopath. Like if it's just like a, it's an equal thing. And then the more they talk about others and the more they kind of focus their their attention on others the more they uh feel a little more free or they're they're a little bit more um light so thinking of not only the feeling afterwards but thinking of others so like rather than oh i don't want to do this podcast i'm tired i have this to do today i have this thinking of like you know who's gonna watch it you know thinking about the other people on the other side of the screen so yeah who can you serve who can you serve with this yeah or like when you're training i don't want to go coach why don't you think about, you know, Marilyn loves to see you. So, or like Remy, Remy loves to see us. So it's like thinking about him, thinking about her wanting to go into coach makes it a completely different energy than like, I have to go coach. It's like, no, no, I'm gonna go help, you know, Rem dog. You know? Yeah. 
Was Remember that good? Seeing always? this comment, say what up. I we need to tell him to watch this now. I love it. Oh my gosh. Me. So the other thing that you just also said was thinking of that feeling afterwards, right? That's yeah. also that future or like long-term mindset that a lot of people don't think about because, or that they don't have, what they have is thinking in the moment. So they're not thinking mm. of the future and then they lose sight, right? They lose sight of what mm. either their goal is or what they're trying for or what they're doing. So like, if you're in that negative feeling in the moment and you haven't consistently been working out and you have not made that habit yet then thinking in the long term is what's going to keep you going and also keeping keep you doing that also obviously creating that habit and that consistency is what keeps you going because as soon as you fall off and you're consistent you're like oh I need to get right back into my routine because it just this doesn't feel right but thinking in the long term like you know you feel like you feel tired it's raining outside I don't want to work out but how am I going to feel after the workout? How will I even feel during the workout? Usually once you get there, you feel great. You're in the gym and you're like, all right, I feel good. And you're, you're like ready. You're ready to work out. You're ready to feel better. And then you almost immediately do because you're already there. Oh, hi, Bubba. Sorry. And then after afterwards, or I'm sorry, out during that time, if you think about, if you get your, that negative thought out, right, then you're like, okay, how am I going to feel after and in the future? What is this going to help me do? It's going to help me stay consistent. It's mm -hmm. going to get me either the the body that I want or yeah. take my cholesterol down or help yeah. with my, you know, um, diabetes. I mean, there's so many benefits, right? Yeah. So like, think of that benefit, think of that goal or that point where you want to get to, because if you keep that in mind, and that's another thing, I mean, I don't want to go on a tangent either, but yeah, yeah, we yeah. could talk about goal setting another time, but that's what keeps you going is that having that goal so close, like so right in front of you, so close to you, keeping that goal visible and there and at the forefront of your mind is what is going to consistently keep you moving forward, which is another topic, but yeah, you, you created two merch shirts today. Close and clear. Yeah. You did that. No, you did that. You just said you got to be close to the vision. You know, well, clear is the same. It was the same thing. You got to stay close to it. Yeah. We're we're running out of time. Uh, Zoom is telling me so. Okay. Ten minutes. Okay, I feel like that was really good. And our next, I really yeah. That, what's the that, next that, one? What's that the next? next I really want to talk about how you talk, talked about the seed and watering it and all that stuff that you were saying, because I feel like that was so good. Yeah. No, there's a lot there. There is. There's a lot there. And then there's also a lot. I think this was a good ending to go into goal setting. So we can start with goal setting next time. Kind of because that's what we we're going to do this time, guys. But we we switched to the last last minute. So goal setting. But we I had some we adversity today. We had some adversity. Adversity and resistance. Oh, but uh, hey, honestly, your uh, your kids did great. I thought they were gonna sleep. They they stayed they stayed through the whole show. They're professionals. They get them a uh, get them a little uh, paycheck. You know, get a little W two. It's good. They're very distracted. It helped a lot. Yeah. Um. Good job. Uh, you as well. Multitasking. That was very impressive to watch. I'm sure that's half of the entertainment of the show is gonna be watching you juggle how you do it. But yeah, do you want to go into goal setting next episode? And then kind of talk about that seed and that thought into a seed, that seed into a tree, or and then it bears fruit. Yeah, because I think that mindset and then goal setting will go good together. And I feel like hopefully you guys let us know, but that might be something you guys want to hear more about. Yes, definitely let us know. Uh, if you're watching this too and you haven't already, comment down below and say hi so we know who's watching, so we know what content to create. Don't forget to subscribe, share <laughs> if you liked it. We're still getting better at those. Is there anything else I missed? No, follow us on Instagram. I'm, Co are you Coach Malik? Yep. So funny. I, you're Coach Malik. I'm Coach Ashley with an S. And yeah, we uh, we honestly love doing this for you guys. So hopefully you can give us some more ideas of what you want to hear. We could do a Q and A soon too. Those are always fun. Good. We could and be we could do a little live, a little Instagram live. Coach Corner, it's coming. Coach. Thank Woo! you guys for watching. Thank you, Ashley. <laughs> All right. Bye. All right. I'll see you.